Episode 1 begins with our protagonist, Rizalyn Stout, aka Riza, sharing info about her island named Kirken, village race in Baden, and goal to break free from her ordinary life. After gazing at the ocean, Riza is shown being distasteful about harvesting Kirken fruit for her father. Her father assures her it'll become second nature for Riza in four or five years. Riza's mother scolds her for slacking off and tasks her with giving her father water. Riza hands her father the water, and he explains why he never grows bored of farming. Riza attempts to leave, but her mother catches her. Riza tells her mother she has a business in the Fairy Stone Forest, but her mother thinks she's making an excuse to go on a silly adventure. Therefore, she tasks Riza with handling an important task. Riza leaves to handle her mother's task. She meets her buddy Tao and asks him why he's tired. Tao says he found a book with diagrams that intrigued him to read it. Riza says it's weird for him to be interested in texts since Tao can't read them, even though his great-grandfather never taught his grandfather. How to read Tao's certain he'll find a way to read it. Riza's other friend Lin arrives, and the two ask him if he's completed his daily sword training. Lin says he has and is simply exploring the town. Lin accompanies Riza and Tao. The trio belittles each other for their weird habits and overhears a man complaining to a merchant named Mr. Fresher about people following Moritz and breaking race and Baden's traditions. After the man leaves, Riza and her friends approach Mr. Fresher. Mr. Fresher informs them that elders have been going around telling people not to get excited about the people arriving at Raisenbaden tomorrow. Teo tells Riza that a famous outsider merchant plans to open a shop at Raisenbaden, and Mr. Fresher says this person has strong support from Moritz. Mr. Fresher hands Riza and Tao their supplies while sharing more intel about this famed merchant. When Tayo brings up the merchant who owns a shop in the capital Ashra, I'm bared to Riza, it makes Riza wonder what life's like off Raisenbaden. At Riza's place, she tells Lint and Tao she wants to go on an adventure off the island. Riza tells Tao and Lint they'll meet with the merchant tomorrow and then explore the opposite Raisenbaden's opposite shore. She argues that Raisenbaden's tradition holds them back. Riza says they'll visit the port, borrow a boat, and make the Pixie Forest their first destination since it sounds like a harmless location. Tao's concerned because the place could harbor monsters, but Riza argues Lint can handle them. Despite their concerns, Lint and Tao go along with Riza's plans. We cut to two different prestigious groups discussing race and Baden and their hopes for it. Meanwhile, Lint spends time with Riza as she collects Yuna's material for their trip. Tao arrives late and Lint questions him about his hammer weapon. Tao said he wanted to bring something that he could swing around. They leave to enact their plan but spot a woman named Agatha chatting with two people. Riza's concerned about borrowing a boat since Agatha will be there. Tao questions if other guardians like Agatha will be at the port. Lint says it's expected since they're assigned to greeting guests. We cut to a girl named Romy acting upset because she can't go on her trip. Agatha butts into their conversation and knows Romy wants to meet the merchant to get on his good side. Agatha promises Romy they'll talk about her poor behavior later since she has urgent business to attend to on the island's other shore. Meanwhile, Riza leads Lint and Tao to a new location with a random fishing boat. Tao argues the boat doesn't have a sail and would go against tradition if they used one without it. Riza reminds Tao they're breaking tradition by leaving the island and should focus on going on an adventure. Riza goes on to speak of her goals for this quest. She entices Lint to go along with it by mentioning the North Tower, as Lint believes exploring it can make him stronger. Although Tao's concerned, he says he'll go along with them. Riza and friends set sail. Meanwhile, Agatha attends to the guests' requests. Suddenly, someone informs Lady Claudia's father that she's gone missing. Agatha's concerned, but her father says it's common for Claudia to flee from the caravan. At the same time, a man accompanying a pristine female named Lila tells her to get the merchant Claudia's father's attention. At the same time, Riza and her friends arrive somewhere and take a break to plan their adventure. Riza takes a map out, but Teo says it's useless. Riza argues why it's good that the map's not complete and says it would be better to draw their own map. Riza spots a trail and tells Tayo and Lint to follow her. Tayo's worried about the potential monsters they'll encounter, but Lint speculates the monsters in this area aren't strong since they're near the port. The crew travels through the forest and indulges in some fun outdoor activities. During their expedition, Riza spots large mushrooms and Lint warns her not to get close to them. Suddenly, Claudia rushes out of the bushes and accidentally bumps into Riza. Claudia apologizes and tells our heroes monsters are after her. Riza and her friends attempt to fight the monsters, but they fail. They retreat and properly introduce themselves to each other. Riza tells Claudia she and her friends are on an adventure to find something impressive. Claudia explains how she got separated from her peers. 
and reveals her father the merchant they heard about. Teo thinks they won't get scolded for breaking tradition since they saved the merchant's daughter. Riza contemplates all they accomplished today and says it's best for them to head home. On their way home, the crew runs into a trio of pixie monsters. They have trouble defeating them, but Lila and her companion arrive to save them. Riza and her friends follow Lila and her companion to a forest guard cabin. Lila's companion explains it was built on a ruin from the Clint Kingdom, and he reads some text written on the house. Tausha realizes it's the same language in his book. Lila's companion sprinkles a concoction on Lint's wounds and everyone shocked it healed his arm. They continue following Lila and her companion. Lila's companion has Lint hold an exorcism brooch that'll repel any monster from attacking them. Lint can't believe how powerful Lila is Ryza approaches Lila's friend and asks him if he's a wizard. Her friend confirms that he's an alchemist and that all the items he saw them use were through alchemy. Agatha scolds Lint, Ryza and Taiyo for their rule-breaking shenanigans. Claudia tries standing up for them, but it doesn't work. The merchant asks Agatha to take him, Claudia and his men to the island. Agatha asks Lila and her friend if they have a business on the island. Lila and her friend tell Agatha they plan to research the Clint Kingdom's ruins. Lila's friend offers to make them various items if Agatha allows him and Lila to stay here. Agatha accepts their request since they saved Ryza's group and Claudia. Lila's friend introduces himself as Impel and thanks Agatha for accepting his offer. The crew travels to Rassenbaden and the merchant thanks Ryza for saving his daughter in private because he didn't want to say it in front of Agatha. When they return to Rassenbaden, Moritz introduces himself to the merchant and we learn his name is Lubart. Ryza and Lint tell Claudia Moritz serves as the face of Rassenbaden and likes sticking his nose into everything. He's rich and has control of the village's water supply, making him powerful. Thereafter, Ryza asks Teo and Lint if they enjoyed the small adventure. Tayo and Lint said they had fun despite the troubling scenario. Suddenly, two residents named Boss and Lombar scold Ryza and her friends for their actions. They inform the trio that the Guardians were furious about their adventure, and Boss confirms it caused a hassle for their work. Ryza contemplates Bo and Lombar's words before bed. Despite their horrible remarks, she's happy she took her first step into the adventuring world. Ryza and her friends visit Impel and Lila and request they help them strengthen and teach them different things. Impel and Lila refuse their offer because they don't have free time, but Tao's book catches Impel's eye. Teo explains he found the book in an underground library at his house. Impel interests Lila and hears the group out. Lila agrees to help Lint learn the basics of fighting if he and his friends can show them around the area. Ryza asks Impel if he can teach her alchemy, but Impel says she doesn't have an innate aptitude for it. Ryza asks Impel to test her for it, so Impel tasks her with a fetch quest since being capable of identifying materials is the basic foundation of alchemy. He gives Ryza a herb and asks her to find more things like it. Claudia notices Ryza and explains. She and Lubart rented a house in the village. Claudia says Ryza can visit whenever she wants, and Ryza promises to show her around. After naming a few places she'd like to show Claudia, Ryza visits the Fairy Stone Forest and finds the herbs Impel told her about. She returns to Impel's place, and he's impressed she found the herbs. Impel leads her through the synthesis or alchemy item crafting portion of her training. He tosses the herb and vial into a pot and uses his mind to create an object of his desire. He asks Ryza to try, and Ryza successfully makes a supplement on her first attempt. Impel informs Ryza she's passed her alchemist test. However, she has a long way to go before she becomes a master alchemist. The episode closes with Ryza and her friends celebrating Ryza's achievement.